Hello, all you fine bronies of the internet. Did you miss me? This is Silver Quill with the MBS Show. Joined today by my cohorts in craziness, the movie reviewer, James Cork. Hello. And my co-co-conspirator of the conspirator, Norman Sanzo. Oh my god, there's something wrong with the timeline. We need to get back. And indeed, there's something different about this timeline because we are four today. Please welcome to the show, Sapphire Hearts. <laughs> The queen has arrived. Bow down to me, peasants and pheasants. Well, good thing I'm not, I need a wolf. Mm, uh, no, Norman, you're a peasant. Shut up and bow. <laughs> I'm both a peasant and a pheasant. <laughs> you're delicious. You could be my pet, too, if you're willing to run with the gag. <laughs> oh, oh, can I be oh a my. pet as well? Oh, my you're goodness. You're not a non-pony OC, sorry. <laughs> oh. My goodness, the, the fan art alone. Oh, my <laughs> Ooh. Throwing, 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 throwing. Oh dear! Well, we triggered him. We hit, no, that's it. <laughs> that's it. Podcast is done. People, pack it in. James <laughs> is inspired. Oh, oh god, no! I'll make sure to beat it down his head to draw that after this podcast, so it's okay. But thinking about podcast, Silver. Last week, what happened, man? Oh, what could, what could I say? Very, very suddenly last week, I. Went to go see the doctor for some uh, pain I was feeling around my in below my belly, and it turned out that I had appendicitis, or perhaps more medically accurate to say I was on the verge of. So the doctors they were not sure about it, but they're like, eh, "Why not?" So under the gentle care of Doctor Weekill, <laughs> that is not made up. That, that is his actual name. Oh my uh, god! I asked. Uh, I'm sorry. Did you say Doctor? Wakil? <laughs> no, we kill. I like oh my pronunciation God. better. It's okay. It, wait, it's it, over. Go it ahead. It was. It was, but I, I was like, I've never been under the knife before. So this was a new experience for me. And actually the, the people at the hospital were magnificent, but I was out of it. I was taking pain meds. Uh, I'm back to my college weight. <laughs> they were very descriptive in what they were about to do. It's like, you know what, guys? I'll be asleep for this, please. <laughs> as long as all my toes are there, you go to town. So now here, here I am with you once again, sans an appendix. Uh, obviously my humor was not tied to my appendix. That's, lo- that's more southern regions. Uh, right. <laughs> <laughs> but you know, I, from, from all of your videos, right? I, I think this is called karma. Oh, this is karma. I get blown up, thrown around, and this is karma? I, I like I, Silver. I don't, think, I don't want I don't him to get hurt. I don't think it's karma. You were just tempting fate way too much. Like, it's starting to get into the real world. <laughs> this, whole, this whole almost dying or actually dying thing and then getting out of with a Faustian deal, this is getting out of hand. You are breaking the fourth wall of the fifth wall. You have to be careful. Next time I'm going to go for the sixth wall. I'm gunning for you, sixy. Oh, my God. <laughs> Although that, that, I, that means you're gonna go for this for the roof. We'll be careful with that. Although I could tell you guys what the actual cause was, but I don't know if you're ready for the horrible truth. Uh, never mind. I, I I think medical students will have a field day on that. Okay. Let, let me guess. Did then you we'll watch be watching? Shades of Black, and that's what caused it. Oh God, no! That's there, look. There's self there's self harm, and then there's the gene pool needs cleansing. That's Fifty oh, Shades yeah. of Black. Oh yeah. Uh, yeah. No. <laughs> Apparently, it's possible that a small bit of fecal matter, maybe a little seed that just gets gets wedged, can block the entrance to your appendix and irritate it. I had a poo stone blocking me off. A poo stone. And the doctor said, you know what? It's really called uh, fecal iciitis or some sort. It's a medical term that I can't say. But we like your definition better, poo stone. But at least you're better now and you're doing well. Well, I, I shall share one other, I shall share one other anecdote. All right. <laughs> uh, after my surgery, I'm very fortunate. I had five very dear friends who came to see me, were waiting for me as I got out of surgery. We were all gathered around and the nurse was explaining to myself, when you have to go to the bathroom, I want you to use this portable urinal. Holds up this big plastic container because I want to measure everything. And I said, well, okay, but in my defense, it's very cold in here. She turned five shades of red <laughs> as her word choice seized upon her. And this nurse, who I am sure has been through 
so much and she dealt with every manner of personality. I'm the one who broke her brain. <laughs> if it were me, I'd be on the floor crying and laughing. So I, I, I claim I claim victory in honor of my last homies, the appendix. You know, I do have one comment regarding the poo stone. Was it shaped like Batman and Robin? <laughs> <laughs> Did it have the face of Joe Schumacher in it? Because I will believe uh, it. I, I can't tell you anymore. All, all I know is uh, when you mess with your digestive system, suddenly everything becomes a poo stone. <laughs> I kept expecting to uh, look down and see someone had carved ancient text into my poop. <laughs> Upon this excrement, we write out 15, 10 oh, laws. Yes. Wait, uh, Silver, did you pay for the medical bill with your bad credit card? I don't have a bad credit card. Touch the nostalgia no. critic. He paid for it with Blue Buzz. Bleh, Blue Bloods <laughs> credit card. Ah, I'm sorry. <laughs> Although, you know what? That method of writing, that's how Twilight the book came to me. Oh. Uh, uh, I'm okay. speaking of Twilight. Yeah. <laughs> yes, now that we've talked about my, my medical conditions, poo stones and embarrassing nurses, <laughs> yeah, let's talk yeah, about yeah. pastels. Horses aimed at children. Yes. Yes. Yeah. Enough for something. That's the perfect different. way to start off a podcast. Yeah. <laughs> Man sitting in front of a desk in the middle of a field, and now for something completely different. And today, oh, what an episode we are covering. The Cutie Remark, two parter season six finale, where we gotta go back in time. Da, na, 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 na. To the time warp again. Uh, to insert your uh, rendition okay. of time traveling. And then have the Terminator. <laughs> I'm not that old Sarah Connor. <laughs> I'm looking for Twilight Sparkle. <laughs> I've received an upgrade. It's called the Metallic Hip. <laughs> uh, but anyway. I'm the governor of California. <laughs> but, but anywho, um, synopsis is in order, I think. A synopsis is in order. Good gravy. A synopsis. After several background appearances, the evil Starlight Glimmer has returned with a convenient spell that sends her back to the moment when Rainbow Dash, as a filly, first broke the Sonic Rainbow. But by preventing that, she in turn prevents all the main six from receiving their cutie marks, from meeting one another, and sets a chain of events that could undo all of Equestria's future. So it's up to Twilight to duke it out with her magical nemesis and restore the future to its proper state. And for our opinions, we shall tackle this in inverted alphabetical order, but I'd like to hold off until the very end. So, Sapphire, would you Me? kindly tell us what you think of this episode? Um, what I think of this episode. For a way to censor myself without Sweetie Belle not scolding me, it was complete bull yak. There were some fun points, like seeing the alternate timelines, but... I couldn't stand it. Like, I was bored throughout the whole entire season finale. I shouldn't be bored. I guess I like a spectacle. Big boom finale, as I stated previously in that one video where I got you to say you love me unconditionally. <laughs> Send by. I plan to do that, BronyCon. Straight to your face. Anyway... <laughs> There were some fun moments, but the lacking came from Stalin Pony herself. Like, as soon as, like, you see her backstory, that was like, really? Or just, <laughs> really? <laughs> this is what traumatizes you into becoming every other cult leader in media to the state. Really? And some worlds, I say, could be worked around, especially the Nightmare Moon arc. That that just raises so many questions, especially considering the conditions of the place. I guess, like, as we go along, I'll explain, like, more, but that's my overall thought that I can come up with on the spot. That's a good deal right there, and we'll have lots to talk about. Yes. But, but Norman, what were your thoughts? On first viewing, I like the episode. It tackled in time traveling, which is kind of weird. We established on the show that time traveling is very hard. Even Star Soul the Bearded couldn't master it. 
And from what we know of time traveling, you can only go back in time for about 10 seconds, was it? A few <clears throat> minutes, a few seconds. Yeah, so we yeah. have that as the um, underlying definition of how time traveling works. Even, was it Pinkie Pie in uh, What About Discord? She brought that up too, but no, they didn't. So having this spell here where time traveling does occur is kind of interesting. And messing up with the timeline, there should be Otacon or Snake saying um, you created a time paradox because this is that. They've created... That's the colonel. Mm, yeah, colonel. colonel thing, yeah. Mm. But they created a lot of time paradoxes, which is interesting. And if you want to go in depth and think about it, yeah, I like where this is going. I like where it's going. But in the end, I had a few problems here and there, especially with what Sapphire said about uh, that villain. Stalin Pony. Stalin? What was, what's his real name? Starlight Glimmer or something like that? Starlight yeah. Glimmer, yeah. Not Twilight. Okay. No, it... that's Moondancer. <laughs> it, I can't believe it's not Twilight. <laughs> Is it or... or does all of the Equestria girls, uh, quote-unquote, villain turn good guy later on, have something to do with a similar to... Uh, how to put this? Uh, starlight glimmer, sunset shimmer, twilight sparkle. I'm seeing a pattern here. Uh, just wait until uh, Starshine Bitter nearly destroys all of Equestria in season six. <laughs> oh, it will happen. You know that. <laughs> like um, I was going. To... Go ahead. I think the the only one that's missing to say something about the uh, like first impression seats. Uh, me and Silver, right? Yes, indeed. So, yeah. James, please um, go ahead. You know, I thought I was going to be alone on this one, but no, I'm kind of like on the same group as Sapphire here. Uh, I, when I first watched the episodes, I, I liked them. I liked them. I thought they were fine. They, they are not my favorite finale, but they are all right. But then I started to think, and that's perhaps the biggest problem with the, with the episode is that as soon as you start to put a little bit of like, not even re- real world logic, because I mean, come on, it's a world of pastel color, ho- color horses. Logic doesn't apply there, but when it comes to storytelling and narrative logic, that's where uh, uh, everything almost starts to fall apart. Is that um, uh, we, we will we will tackle it as we are talking about the concept of time travel in itself, but it goes from actually being a novelty, interesting and fun, to become kind of like a mundanity. Also, it's very interesting to to think that despite the high stakes, terrible drama that was happening throughout the entire episode, the impact in the actual uh, in the in the actual timeline where the main six are all friends and everything it's it's non-existent. It, it's zero. It's like all of this never happened. It's, it's perhaps the most inconsequential of all of the finales because it hasn't made an impact in the world. In like okay, in the season two finale. They they defeated the changelings. There was a wedding. That's big. In the season three finale, Twilight turned into an alicorn. That's very big. That, that that's a huge change. And in the season four finale, they put a pretty castle in the middle of Honeyville. That <laughs> contrast with everything. Okay, fine, but it's still a change. It's still somewhat a, a change that you can see. I don't think we're going to see much of Starlight Glimmer in season six, especially from that preview that we had a few weeks ago. Uh, which one? The one in the tree? No, oh, that was oh. fake. Oh, God. Oh, right, okay. the, that was fake. I'm talking about about Princess yeah, that one, that Masi- one. Princess, Ooh. I am making the Scootaloo feel inadequate <laughs> and I don't Princess. even have the ability to speak. Princess me if I were a baby without a horn and without those demonic eyes. Princess oh, McDonald organ. <laughs> <laughs> Pretty uh, much. Princess- Princess, oh my god, Cadence was screaming for a C-section right now. <laughs> uh, but anywho. But yeah, I mean, I, I'm i not so hot about this one. We'll talk about it. But Silver, please, let, tell us, what do you think of, of this uh, finale? This finale is fun to watch. If, you, if I take the view, this is what could have happened if Twilight and Company failed. But it's not what would happen if they failed. This is the question of how would... How would the world have played out if they'd never met? And in a certain respect, I'm actually kind of disappointed because it's so on the rails. And 
funny enough, watching the fan reaction, watching people explain their their head cannons and their interpretations, it, I've realized how set we are by continuity. Even when it's been broken, we try to gather the fragments. And I'll I'll try to expand on that later. I too felt that Starlight's background it, this is called a Freudian excuse. It's TV tropes, ladies and gents. Mm. Basically, it's trying to say all the tragedy in life can be condensed to one single event. And while we do have those watershed moments, those core memories, the truth is we are still shaped by what happens after. So really, I'm afraid you're looking for too much of a slapdash answer to why is Starlight the way she is. But this does highlight a lot of the things that show that I find the main six are the only competent ponies in the whole of Equestria. Redemption and forgiveness occur very quickly, so much that the audience uh, isn't given time to empathize with the character's struggle to redeem themselves. I think that's why Luna and later Discord drew such uh, empathy and sun Sunset Shimmer. The other thing I found fascinating, again, this is almost more an episode about fan reactions. And how we have all become like Sherlock Holmes, believing that if we can look at a situation, we can intuit or deduce uh, what is happening just from that glance. And I'll try to expand on that scene by scene. But it is fun. It's fascinating to see these worlds. It's, uh, in some ways, this was a celebration of past conflicts, not so much a, a setup for where we're going forward, but let's look back at how far we've come. Look at all the bad guys we done trounced. And look at what could have been averted. So in my long-winded way, that is uh, my view on the episode. And we decided that rather than try to tackle this scene by scene and plot point for plot point, we'd be here until I needed to have my liver removed. Wait, what? So, yeah, yeah, for, you know, another ten minutes? No. <laughs> <laughs> I, I like, like no, I just met you. <laughs> and it's driven me to drinking. What does that say? Oh, <laughs> it says that I am a stalker who knows where you live. Oh God, no. I don't know. <laughs> oh, 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 I wish you know, I knew that least. info, I, but I don't. Oh, I was about to say, share the information. Share it. <laughs> I said I oh. wish I knew that, but I don't. I wake up so I don't bother. <laughs> I wake up oh, one morning, there are three people outside my front door. Hi! We want to do a live NBS show. Oh, God. <laughs> uh, that would be the dream. Uh, that, that is my... he's, he's three computers, laptops, and cameras holding from his neck. <laughs> <laughs> and mm. uh, so now we shall, we shall instead tackle the themes. We shall go over each mm, basic big idea and maybe bring it a little bit. So, be warned, if you haven't seen the finale... It's time to go watch it. Go ahead, we'll wait. Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. we're, going to, we're going to spoil the horse apples out of it. <laughs> so you don't, you, you don't come to us complaining, oh, you spoiled the show for us. No, shut up. We're going to talk about it now. So if you haven't. Then again, it's been like, what, two months? Yeah. You should have seen it by now, so. We're going to three, actually. <laughs> Let me double check. Uh, November 29th, sorry, November 28th of 2015. Yeah, oh, I saw three it. months. Oh, oh I saw it when it was like um in December. I was at my grandma's house oh. and stuff. Okay. Oh, you okay. guys are just remembering how deep in the hole I am on reviews. Yeah. <laughs> oh. I know. Especially with um season six coming out in April. You better get on it, old man. <laughs> uh, oh wait, I, you're thirty five. You're not that old. Oh thank you. <laughs> <laughs> she called me old and did a save. Yeah. But I uh, you know <laughs> as a side note. I don't really care if if I'm still reviewing season five with season six rolls around because they're all good episodes with with some exceptions. But even the bad can serve a purpose. This is how you don't do something. But let's get this shit digger rolling as we talk about this by themes. And I think for our start off, death by PowerPoint, Twilight Sparkle, the Al Gore of Equestria. An inconvenient truth. <laughs> Pony edition. Did you know that Alicorn magic causes global warming? <laughs> That's why I'm going to put Princess Celestia and Princess Luna in prison. <laughs> <laughs> and I will be the only ruler. What about Cadence? Oh, no, Cadence is fine. She's only half Alicorn. <laughs> she uh, don't matter. Wow. 
She's all the way on the north. Her magic melts the polar caps, and that's how we have waterfalls. <laughs> it's fine. Oh, yeah, yeah. But I would have thought that Twilight would be good at presenting things, like, you know, doing presentations and whatnot. This is awkward. Really, really awkward. Actually, I find it in character. Twilight is a very by the books. Remember, remember when she was supposed to give a, a speech for Applejack after she was receiving the, the town award? Yeah, yes. Yeah. All the, all the cards. Yeah, she had how many cards? Uh, she had a, a, a bunch, a good stack of cards, and then they all at threw least away. 200 from okay. the looks of it. Actually, I, I'm not sure the joke holds up anymore. I actually do want to see Twilight's, uh, uh, carbon footprint because I think she's killed like several forests <laughs> for no cards. Are you sure it's not because of that one Minotaur? Iron Will? No, the other one. Terry? Oh. oh, no. Uh, the guy That's from the, the comics. Com- yeah. Oh. 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 I don't oh. the com- Norman, I'm sorry. Norman, I, I swear to, swear to God, God, don't bring that up again. <laughs> don't. <laughs> don't. Can I hear him with the idiot stick now? <laughs> don't. Oh, yes. <laughs> Okay. Don't open that door if you don't want to call in the thunder, mister. <laughs> Come on, little Normie. We'll go into a place where the sun don't shine. Oh, uh, no. Yeah, go. Go ahead. I'll hold him back. Uh, but carry okay. on. But, yeah, so Twilight. Title cards. Twilight title cards. Audience. Lots of ponies. It's like all of the uh, Canterlot Boutique background ponies who, I'll be honest, I really thought fans would go to town on these characters. You know, fan fiction, comics, the, you know, the, the, the gothic raven-esque pony and her bright sunshine. You mean every part. other Luna fan. Yeah. Every other Luna fan and every other Celestia fan. Although every other Celestia fan makes me ashamed to be a Celestia <laughs> fan because of this accent right here. Oh my god. <laughs> oh my uh, god. But I just thought, I thought there'd be more plot around these characters. I've been sort of surprised that there has not. Well, it could be because of the episode in general. Did you see any fan art of uh, Sassy Saddles? Besides, well, you know, the ones that we cannot discuss in this show because it's PG friendly. Mm-hmm. Well, well Sassy, Sassy's a different sort of situation. Yeah, I Sassy... think that maybe because she was such a big thing in that episode, people like took the entire opinion of her and applied it to everything else in the episode. For me, all I can say about Sassy is that she is a recolor of my waifu. <laughs> oh. That's all I can say. Other than that, I hate her. Uh, Fleur de Lis. Fleur de, Fleur de Lis? <laughs> yes, Fleur de Lis, my Fleur. waifu. Uh, but I think the only reason why people are going to town with the background character is because, well... The episode itself is being overshadowed. Like they're in rage, or they're they're just arguing about the timeline instead of looking at the background things. We'll talk about the timeline something fierce shortly. But oh, yeah. uh, but then Twilight spies Starlight Glimmer, and she's like, and here's my friends, and oh my gosh, if anyone were to have attacked us this moment in time. We never would have connected. Our lives would have been ruined. This is probably when we were the most vulnerable in the entire space-time continuum. Wow. Convenient. Press X to mech everything up. (laughs) Although, when you really think about it, it's kind of weird how everybody says that Twilight used to be the every girl, but she was actually loaded. Oh, yeah. Yet, in a way, really, this... I don't know. Like, it shouldn't affect her that much. Like, if she didn't meet her friends, I guess, I don't know. But I think the point of Cutie Mark Chronicles is just to explain during this point of time, because of Rainbow Dash, we got our Cutie Marks. And from that point on, we discovered happiness. We discovered our special talent. We discovered who we are. I thought that the point of the episode was that the main six had a connection before they were even the main six. Yeah, that too. So with that, people people overlook it because it's a season one episode and it's it doesn't really play that much to the whole overall of the show until now. You you say that like oh. people don't care about season one when many people say oh season one is the only oh, season, season one is every season good, after, but season you... one after season one every episode sucks because Lord and Faust is not in the show anymore. No, season one is good, but the thing is when it comes to continuity and stuff, 
it's kind of put into the background where everybody knows and understands. It's like learning mathematics. One plus one is two. You know, is it that is? Is... Oh, yes. <laughs> I, 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 I don't believe that, Norman. You're wrong. <laughs> although, although with this contrast, like, when we see, like, the alternate timelines, you gotta ask, how did they get their cutie marks later on? Because one of my complaints with this um, two-parter was oh. that they showed the cutie marks... Like, during the sequences, I don't know, like, from Chrysalis to the other timelines. Yeah, like, it, Rarity it has makes her you wonder. Mark. Yeah, like, it makes yeah. you wonder, if the rainbow didn't happen, how else did they get their cutie mark? Also, what is the alter, what is the, what is the Twilight Sparkle of that timeline? What is she? Well, they can't show her, because time paradox! I think we're securing ourselves up for the actual uh, timeline discussion. So let's jump ahead. Starlight is there. She's all chillaxing in Twilight's uh, castle like a bala. And this is why Twilight needs to hire security staff. I'm just saying. I agree. Mm -hmm. I agree. Big castle. (laughs) Magical items everywhere. Hidden secrets. Night security. I'm just saying. Portal to the other universe. Call, call Flashy Poo, sign him to protect the castle and, and, and his waifu. Uh, in all honesty, that would at least give Flash a purpose. Oh, true that. Yeah. It would, it would set the shippers and the anti-shippers going, but. Oh, the fun. Some people <laughs> just want to watch the fandom burn. Where's my <laughs> fiddle? <laughs> all right. So let, let us talk about the first timeline. The war timeline. Coolest the King timeline. Sombra. He still doesn't get much lines after an evil laugh. I think we should actually do inverted alphabetical order once again. Okay. Just to give an overall impression. So, Sapphire, tell us your heart's delight. I just enjoyed the aesthetics and the look of this episode. I am not, or not this episode, this timeline. Um, I would have liked to see more of, like, the somber war, like, the backstory behind it. I know it's a kid's show, but do you really need a sissy slap fight to conduct, like, a portrayal, a portrayal of a war? I, war. I enjoyed the war uniforms. I enjoyed, <laughs> I enjoyed the look of it, but I just didn't care because I'm not, a, I'm not an apocalyptic movie fan. Well, technically that's how horses fight. Like, eh. Yeah. Yeah, no, I'm gonna hurt you. No, I'm gonna harm you. Stop hitting me! I I know that you guys want the spears, the swords, and this is fine. Yeah. I, know I you guys want the want world's this. bloodshed. I know you guys want that, but in all honesty, it seems logical for horses to fight that way. Well, you know, those slap fights might seem sissy and everything, but Rainbow Dash doesn't have a wing. So oh yeah, you can, you can tell that those could be lethal. I'd like to know how, um, I'd like to know how she lost her wing. Oh, like, I'm pretty sure the same process she got that, ter- that, that ugly scar on her face and half an ear chopped off. Yes. Well, it's kind of funny. Rainbow in, in all the timelines is the poster child of how this world has changed. In one timeline, she is maimed by war. In another timeline, she may be dead and replaced by a changeling. Oh. And in another, she- violent, ag- or at least aggressive servant to Nightmare Moon. Yeah. Rainbow Rainbow became the, the whipping child, I'm, I'm afraid there's no other way to say it, of this time travel nonsense. Which is awesome. <laughs> it's, well, it's, it's, it's really awesome, though, but it, 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 is tr- it is true. Think about it this way. She managed to make her dreams come true in all of those timelines. She's part of the Wonderball. She's part of the guards. She's part of the, you know... She's she's with the author the authority force. She's not doing such a thing on the good timeline, which is where Twilight is coming from. Well, I can understand why like Rainbow Dash would be like the poster child, though, mostly because well, she's kind of the cause of the rain boom to happen in the first place. So of course she'd be sort of like the whole indirect centric around this entire episode. Maybe that's why I don't like this episode that much. Oh, you don't like Dashi? Uh, least favorite pony. Oh my. I can oh, understand sorry. that. She, she's a bit of a jerk in many episodes. <laughs> she's all the parts of me that I hate. <laughs> Except the tomboy factor. Moving on. Moving on. So, okay, that's, uh, Norman, do you have any thoughts on the, uh, 
on the war. Hmm. I'm, I'm trying to think about it. I, I had something to say, especially when it comes to uh, Rainbow Dash. When you mentioned that she's kind of the poster child for uh, the alternate timeline and how they get their key marks and so on, but I've been thinking, and yeah, when you do something, probably you get it on another time later on, but things change, so your opinion of said things would be not the same. In Rainbow Dash's case, I'm guessing that she has a key remark, is looking the same, and somehow that caused her a wing, and that's how she got the blade wings and whatnot. And other than that, we forgot to mention that King Sombra has an army of crystal ponies enslaved to him and forced to fight. Okay, who here read Final, is it Final Crisis, where Darkseid in the DC Universe is taking everyone over? Uh, I heard of him. He's evil, yes. Mm. Uh, I Basically, heard of that one too, but I didn't read it either. I don't read DC mm. or Marvel, and I don't read. <laughs> you are all so dead sorry. to me. <laughs> no, Silver Senpai, love me! Okay, go ahead. He, he, just a very short version. Basically, his le- he is forcibly recruiting humans and basically anyone he can get his hands on. They shove a helmet on your head. The helmet, this gets f- far too deep into DC lore, but there is a thing called the anti-life equation. And that helmet screams it into your brain, which makes you a servant of Darkseid, who is the oh, opposite boy. of life. So... I kind of wonder, okay, that's pretty much where the similarities end. I wonder, what are those helmets doing to the crystal ponies to make them behave like this? What what could be screaming in their heads? <laughs> crystal? If you don't do this, then we will... I don't know. No, 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 Actually, I know exactly what, they're, what, the, what, what the helmets are saying. All hail Hasbro. All hail Hasbro. <laughs> All hail Hasbro. I, actually, I, I, my personal theory, Friday, Friday, <laughs> gotta get down on Friday. Well, I have another theory in that sense, but I don't think you want to hear it, because then everybody's ears will bleed. All you need to know is the demon from Canada. Oh, God, no. <laughs> Celine Dion? <laughs> no. The one that we'd like to kick out of America. Oh, that guy. Oh. Yeah, that guy. Oh, yeah, one. that guy, the one <laughs> guy. I, I know, I know. Anyway, James, what what are your thoughts on this this dark, bleak war future? War uh, I want a spin-off series based off of this. <laughs> 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 straight up, straight forward, I want a, a spin-off series based off of this. Because it's very interesting, very badass, and uh, I don't know. I can see a storyline going with uh, them trying to take down Sombra and everything like Going Ari, Prisoners of War. I like the fact, I, I am not sure, I don't know what to think about Applejack being stuck in a farm, uh, like, you know, preparing rations for the army and all that. But uh, maybe because I've seen that animation, how Applejack won the war like a thousand times and I cannot wait to see it again, uh, later on today. But I, I, you know, I imagine Applejack just building an apple tank and going after, uh, against the, the, uh, the armies of King Sombra and beating all of them to a pulp. But yeah, no, I really like this timeline. This is perhaps the most interesting one visually and narratively speaking. Because it's, it's funny, you'd expect King Sombra to be the one that has taken over everything, but the ponies are putting up a bit of a fight. Mm-hmm. I have a question here, like, it just popped into mind, and this is kind of the Jit. So, the Sombra timeline kind of happened during after season, well, I think it's the beginning of season two. So, after a thousand years, the Crystal Empire popped back into existence and King Sombra ruled them again. So, where's Nightmare Moon? That's something that I'd like to tackle a little bit later because that's what I mean when I say people either believe that they can deduce the truth from what we see or they're on the rails with continuity. Could we hold off on that until we've covered the three big oh, timelines? Sure, 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 sure. Yeah. And I guess for my two cents, I did love the red tint to everything. It made the war more aggressive, more intense. It's probably why this one strikes me as the most high stakes, even though the others have some very terrible feats as well. Yeah. 
Oh, I I was a little disappointed by Celestia. I Why? Because she's only just commanding. Well, she's commanding. She's surprised by four guys, and she just bla- pushes them away. But we're all waiting for her to show her true power someday. Is she really the the whirlwind of power that we all imagine, or have we built her up too much in our heads? Can I just remind everybody how she got beat down by a bug <laughs> in the season two finale? Love powered bug, the love uh, bug. Every, yeah, every, well, everybody says, well, "Oh no, Celestia was using it. all of her powers because she was trying not to hurt her subjects." And I'm like, "Yeah, no, bull crap." Well, think I, about it. Chrysalis feeds off of love, and when you suck the power of the princess of love, as well as her friggin' fiance, who feels that same love for her, of course, love conquers all, and all that well, other no, that's... TV trope crap. That's not really and, true, though, because she didn't suck the power out of Cadence. Cadence okay, was the one. Maybe she Cadence still but... had. She still had all the power that that she had, or else she wouldn't have been able to restart Shining Armor back into you know full strength. Or uh, maybe no, she that... sucked a different kind of love from Shining Armor. Oh no, my. Is, that... <laughs> 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 is that you say? Okay, she's a love power bug and everything. Um, I have a bottle of insecticide here. Leave me alone with her for five minutes. I'll solve the problem. I've got my crystal splashy right here if you need oh, it. Oh, it's, it's, it's not working. Let me put a, a lighter in front of it. <laughs> I think the the only... Well, my headcanon for Celestia is that corny as it may be, that she could be a Superman type character. Well, and, and love is her kryptonite? That's why she cannot love? Where she's controlling her true strength. Where she's concerned of every little detail that she's doing like she's controlling every bit of her energy where if she were to release it let's just say that cantalot would be a crater we assume that but given the number of times she seems to just get beat down i'm starting to think we've we've given alicorns too much power probably i I do agree although another thing celestia is thousands of years old Mm -hmm. so Maybe because, like Lauren Faust had said previously, um, that she wanted Twilight to surpass Celestia. Maybe Celestia is, like, reaching that point of time, a.k.a. Silver Cold's age, Hmm? to where she can retire. (laughs) (laughs) I'm sorry, Silver, I love you. You're not that old. (laughs) Yet. Yeah, he makes, give it he's 10 not minutes. all he's <laughs> well be that as it may be or not, I, I think we should go to the second timeline the second yeah. timeline yes, the pastel yeah. greens oh yes yes the green, I'm a sucker the, for Chrissy the, <laughs> the greens where everything is greed and gooey and tribal I don't, I don't know which is better tribal Fluttershy who is declaring all must be destroyed <laughs> I can't or, take her seriously. <laughs> or Zakura, who hasn't gotten to really do anything this season. She was title, car- she's t- opening title material and hasn't m- made more than a few seconds of cameo this season. Yeah, and technically, technically, this is on a timeline that has no impact in the actual main timeline of the show. So you can write off her, in- her uh, involvement in this episode right away. She makes no impact. All right, so, okay, we went inverted alphabetical order the last time, so let's go alphabetical. James. Oh, no, me first. Or what What to say of this one? You know, I have to uh, bring bring something, it's like you, said, you said, the the pastel greens on this one, the red tint of, of the previous one. When we get to the next storyline, it's going to be all blues. I like the coloration of each one of these timelines. That is one other thing that I'm going to give credit for. It's like, visually speaking, very distinctive. But... Looking at the tribe's ponies and all that, and all I can think of is, ugh, Avatar is such an overrated movie. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's, I, I don't know, I, but I like that, I like the concept of, uh, these, uh, these ponies hiding in, in the middle of the, in the middle of the Everfree Forest, the one place they, they deem so dangerous, nobody has ever come back, or, back out of it alive. Now they're using it to survive. I'm starting to think Sakura started that rumor to keep kids off for a long. <laughs> <laughs> oh. 
Then Rarity, Applejack, and Rainbow Dash appear, and they are not themselves. <laughs> they are changelings, of course. One of them being being Chrysalis, and he's like, I love the implication that maybe all of those three are actually dead. I don't think they're dead. I think they're stuck in a cocoon somewhere. Although, how fascinating that Chrysalis chose to imitate Applejack, the most honest pony. Oh, yes. Not, not only the most honest pony, but perhaps the most reliable. It's like, if they are going to believe anyone, it's going to be Applejack. True that. But, Norman, what do you think of this dark period of... Oh, my, oh my gosh, there's bugs. <laughs> well, <laughs> I find it interesting where... It goes back to the timeline again, but we're not going to touch that one now. But I find it interesting where, okay, the events happen, and apparently the wedding was still on. But Chrysalis kind of crashed the wedding and conquered everyone. So most of the ponies are somewhere else, and Celestia is in a cocoon somewhere. There's a line from Zakura that I really like, and her line is, Time is a river where even the tiniest change scene can lead to a cascade of effect downstream. And I think, Silver, you brought this up on your Silver Quilt um, impressions. Where, quilted. Yeah, Quilted impressions about this episode where uh, why not it change Backs, backstream or whatever it is like how much change can it go why must it be all bad and from that a fanfic came out of it which is called The Reality I Choose by the Hatman on Finfic and it brings up an interesting aspect of the story I'll put a link on the show notes or in the what you call this description below and it's just a good read well it's not all dark and grim there's some like an end of story if you know what to do. I appreciate you mentioning that. I've read that and was very grateful to Hatman for taking my idea and running with it. He even was kind enough to link my silver quilted in the description. Again, I, I, I kind of want to tackle this as we talk about the fandom interpretations in general. There is one of my own questions I want to ask, but we'll, we'll get to that. Sapphire Heart Song. It's a bug hunt. Yes. A bug hunt. Not the changelings, not the changelings. Anyway, this timeline, I'm going to say right now, I'm a sucker for Chrysalis only because she looks kind of cool. But that's the only thing I can work off of. Although, I know you've mentioned, like, the whole continuity error thing earlier, Silver, but I honestly don't see any motive for, like, Chrysalis in this timeline. One thing I find interesting with this well, actually not interesting, like, a bit of an error. Why would she be going after ponies when all she really wanted in, like, Canterlot Wedding was other ponies' love? That's kind of the reason why she was terrorizing them in the first place. Yes, they were I so guess... full of love as they ran for their lives. Yes. <laughs> I kind of enjoy the scenery, although... When it comes to, like, the characters and whatnot, and like I said, I'm disappointed that you could see the cutie marks on the characters, but that's minor, that's just nitpicking. Um, Although, you know what, I will give, I will give you that one is that it's not really a minor nitpick, it's a, it's a fair, it's a fair nitpick. Those like, cutie marks have no business being in there. Unless they, like, have some other, like, way of determining, like, like I said, fanfic writers get on it, <laughs> of how else they get their cutie marks. I wish they didn't show them. Although, with the characters, um, Zakora basically turned into the expositional Princess Mononoke sci-fi Yoda figure. She's there to explain the plot and really doesn't have any other purpose other than sacrificing herself to try to stop Chrysalis. Oh, and Twilight. Maybe you should with sacrifice Twilight. yourself. Twilight. Oh god, Twilight. That really, really bullyack line of, well, shouldn't you agree to her terms anyway? Did she say that? Why, Twilight? Like, when she was like, when Chrysalis was like, if you surrender, we will set all these ponies free or something like that. Twilight should know better than to try to, you know, I um... Understand. But yeah. th this is where I think the comics interpretation of Chrysalis and Twilight or versus Twilight is done much better because Twilight has a grudge against Chrysalis and it's a strong grudge. Well, the, the thing with Twilight and Chrysalis in the comics goes far, far back. It all 
steers from the Canterlot wedding, but it grew from each one of the different arcs. They have been, you know, facing each other. True. Twilight and, and Grizzlies are like Sherlock Holmes and Moriarty. They yeah. are the, the, the eternal villain, villain versus hero fight. That's true. That's I'm so team. happy. I actually have that comic. <laughs> yeah. But For you once. mean the, the return, the return of Queen Chrysalis or the, part, yeah. Yeah. At least part four. I got it at a convention. Um, it was like the, uh, cl- it was the St. Patty's Day cover. Uh-huh. It's, it's not perfect. It's not flawless, but it's definitely a very, very cool ride. Yeah, but the thing about that one, like I want to mention, is that, okay, Twilight holds a grudge against Chrysalis. In this timeline, they never met. But Twilight here should know that Chrysalis is not to be trusted. So why is she saying, uh, blah, there goes again where the whole thing, like, nitpicking and stuff like, eh. We're supposed to root for Twilight and believe that she can pull them out of this. If she's so fearful to act that she's willing to surrender someone else, to save the day, you lose confidence in her. The thing is that in this timeline, she wouldn't have been able to do anything about it because the conflict, the problem doesn't steer from this timeline. It steers from the moment that Starlight Glimmer decides to, you, no rain booming. So it's not, it's not really something that she can solve in the future. Like if you remember back to the future too, when they go into the timeline where Beef Tannen has won and has taken over everything, which might as well be the timeline where we are all living right now, Doug Brown says, no, if we want to change things, we have to go back to the moment where Beef was giving himself the almanac. So she has to keep going back to where Starlight Glimmer stops the rainbow yeah, to stop her from stopping it. Yeah, true. That This also brings up a point where, okay, you time travel, you change the past, you have an alternate future. So if I change the past, would the alternate future be there? It's going back to the whole Dragon Ball Z saga where Trunks travel back in time to help Goku, and when he goes back to his future, they're still dead. Basically, the uh, the parallel universe creation. Yes. So it's possible that all these futures we see are still there as a parallel universe. Yes. They are still existing. Probably. Well, that, well, that goes into quantum physics uh, scenario. Well, that's outside my pay grade. I was... Wait, are you getting paid for doing this? <laughs> I, <laughs> I, I wish. No, ah, when you're getting paid ah, zero. Ah. That that kind of stuff is way outside your pay grade. There is one other element to this timeline that's important. When when Zakura smears the goop on Twilight and it glows, and she's like, "Oh, this means we shouldn't exist." That's the ego I'm talking about. That that Starlight later references. Spare me your overgrown ego. This is saying the world is not right unless Twilight is how we've seen her in the show. There is no, this is not just alternate future based on events. This is wrong. This is destiny. It's chosen I, one bull crap. It's, it's chosen one. And it, I'm sorry, but the, the idea of chosen one destiny, we've changed the meaning quite a bit where it's now entitlement. And a lot of that is if a twilight's not there, then we're going to break the world. And I think that as this went along, I think I think this timeline was the one where that feeling started to really grow for me. What, because of what Sekora says? We are not the ones that are meant to be? Exactly. It's like, wow. Most people would say, you know, this isn't ideal, but this is my life. I'm not just going to fade away. A little more self-preservation, but no, her declaration is, no, we should not exist. All of you, hop into oblivion. <laughs> you know, I remember one sentence from your Silver Quilted review of it, uh, and, and I didn't get it at the time, but then I started to think about it, and you're absolutely right. It's the ego that is not on the characters, but on the writing. Exactly. And I absolutely I agree that. with you. I, I, I wasn't, I wasn't agreeing with you. When I when I first watched that video, I was like, well, I don't think there's really all that much ego on it. But then you look a bit into it and you're like, huh. suddenly it's like these guys, these characters are necessary for everything to go fine. They cannot have an, a scenario where, oh, hey, look, alternate main six. They are the ones that become the elements of harmony. No, they are the cure-all and all for all the problems in this land. And mm-hmm. if they are not there, they are up a creek. Well, this goes for Twilight is the gear that moves everything to goodness and whatnot because she was the one that spotted Nightmare Moon. She was the one that knew Chrysalis was attacking. She was the one that stopped 
Discord and she was the one that stopped Tarek. Like she was the one that did everything. Which makes her look really great, but at the same time it reduces the world. No one else is competent in this world. Not even Celestia, it seems. So mm-hmm. that's that's where the ego on the part of the writing is starting to come in. Probably, but I think that's just because, well, Hasbro wanted the story and Josh Heber kind of wrote it and they agree on the set scenario. But let's move on. Well, to- no, is that, no, it's, it's, no, Hasbro doesn't set the story. Hasbro has never set the story. Hasbro gives the, gives the writers, hey, toy, put it in the show. I don't know, we don't know how, somehow, whatever. Uh, Give us the screenplay when it's completed. And there you go. Probably, yeah. That could be true. I think that's a much better explanation. But Hasbro does do the green light for most of the writing. So, yeah. if writers also, says... I, you, you know what? If we're going to blame Josh Haber, we also have to remember he wrote some of the best episodes of this season. And he wrote Equestria Girls uh, uh, Friendship Games. You can only make so many scripts. The same way that you can ma- only make so many drawings or so many videos or so many podcast episodes and expect all of them to be perfect, you're going to end up making a couple of blunders in the way if you make many of them. So, I mean, come on. I'm trying to defend the man from like, for like the humiliation of mine, <laughs> which it's, it's but, I know, can, it's what's... kind of like a, in a futile attempt of giving him the benefit of the doubt. Mm-hmm. Well, don't worry. This is not the trial of Josh Haver. <laughs> we, shall, we shall not cast judgment upon the man. Instead, we <laughs> shall talk about the Nightmare Moon future. Oh yeah. Um, yeah! I'm blue, double D, double die. Double D, double die. All hail the queen. And so, I no, think... No, I refuse. <laughs> Alright, Sapphire. What are your thoughts oh, on the boy. Nightmare moon- Mooning? The Mooning? The Mooning. Well, I'm more, I'd like it better if Celestia was mooning me, but... Um, <laughs> you know, like, Rainbow Dash's face during, um, Tanks for the Memories... The I'm not angry, who says I'm angry, do I look angry face? Oh, very big fan of that. That's my face. Oh, dear. I don't hate Princess Luna. I really don't. But this, if it wasn't for the fact that this arc was blue, and I'm a big sucker for the color blue, in case you haven't noticed, I would be facepalming over the logic of this episode... The fact that the fans have interpreted this as the best arc so far, because it apparently has this working system that nobody will question. Oh, I I, th- I know who you're quoting. Uh, yeah. What there's working like this... system? Basically, because there's no armed revolution in Nightmare Moon's own castle, folks assume that the rest of Equestria is instantly at peace and happy. And, and that's oh. complete, yeah, you right. know, so that Speedy Bloom won't scold me, bullyak. And in the, me- in the meantime, in North Korea, <laughs> yeah, that's, it's yeah, like sure. saying it's like saying everything is perfect in America with all the other countries being, you know, at war. It's like that. It's not well, the, even if worry, it that's... looks fine on the surface. It's not. That's Especially... the future you guys are heading to with Donald Trump as president. It's fine. <laughs> <laughs> I will admit, I do love the look of it, I love the appeal and aesthetic of it, but even past that, I don't buy it. I don't buy it at all. Yeah. That's my overall generalization plot. Like, I've expressed my opinions in that one review, you know, that everybody should go check out because I'm totally not promoting that one review that I did and stuff where I animated and stuff and Silver Cole's in it and I'll shut up. <laughs> wow. I'll put a link into it. I'll put a link into it. Plug, I'm plug, kidding. plug, plug, plug. If you plug it more, you're going to run out of wall sockets. You know, this is not the first time we plug something. You guys should totally oh, buy up. Amy Larson's book it's, it's, called Penny Royal Academy. It, it, it's perfectly fine. It's not like I have a pony ask blog. Ask movies late. You can go check it out whenever you want. And uh, I'm going to have my appendix bronze and put on eBay. Feel free to check out the auction. <laughs> oh, I want that. Uh, well. I, can, I, can, I can clone my own silver quill. Oh, God. Do you really want more than one of me in this world? Yes. yes. <laughs> I want to hug him and squeeze him and then pet his bald head. Oh. My bald. 
Because I because I am thinning out up there. Oh god. I went to I went to restore you in my room and just hold you and then pet your bald head. <laughs> Twenty sixteen, the, have... the year I look into hair implants. <laughs> You, you don't have to worry about it. I, statistically speaking, bald men are way more attractive than men with hair. Yeah, I break lots of statistics. <laughs> <laughs> no, come on. Don't be so hard on yourself. But, well... It, Besides, it's you been... will be able to cosplay as John McClane. <laughs> he looks like my dad, except this one doesn't ride a motorcycle. But he's still even better than my dad. Okay, moving on. <laughs> well, but, well, on that oh. note, James, you will be hard on this scene, or not? Uh, well... You know, this is perhaps the one and only time that Nightmare Moon has actually been somewhat of an intimidating villain. At least from where I stand, I, I, I agree with what you said, Sapphire, is that, yeah, having an authoritarian bad guy in power that has plunged the world into eternal darkness, night forever. Yeah, I don't think everybody's happy with this. Uh, but I love the scene where Rarity completely shuts down Spike. That's glorious. Love it. Oh my gosh, that, that was so that was so funny. For once, Nightmare Moon actually proves to be a somewhat useful, interesting, and, and competent bad guy. But then she gets foiled by the one thing that defeated her in the first place: the monologuing. As soon as they arrive to the to the table, uh, the, the the time device, the time machine, and every, and all that. Twilight starts monologuing, and that is the one weakness that Nightmare Moon has. Is that, that it's the thing that defeated her in the in the series premiere? Is the thing that's defeating her now? It's like as soon as you start monologuing in front of her, she has no power to go and say, "Hey, I'm gonna seize you and I'm gonna put you in prison." Nope, doesn't do that. She lets Twilight get away with it. Uh, I could see Nightmare Moon right after Twilight vanished into the time flow. Curse my attention disorders. <laughs> Foiled again. Yeah. Ooh, shiny. <laughs> am I the only one, am I the only one who, who thinks that? Is that, come on, Nightmare Moon, you, you are so much better than this. Don't worry, you're not the only one, like I said. Review thing that I plugged in shamelessly. My reaction throughout this whole episode th- overall, facepalm, 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 until my head is in a state of, I don't know. Until your head is full of what? For my two cents, we got, you guys have covered much of what I uh, already say. I mean, Nightmare Moon, I really do think she is neglecting Equestria if the Everfree has intruded that far into uh, Ponyville. This is me making an assumption, but I'm assuming the map doesn't move from where it's supposed to be, w- or was, but isn't. Time travel is hard. So, for the Everfree Forest to have encroached, it would mean Ponyville would be overrun. And that would mean Nightmare Moon is being very negligent of her domain. I don't buy the theory that life is better under a totalitarian. It just means that she's got a really sweet pad and that's all we got to see. But again, Rainbow Dash, what happened to Rainbow after she lost that race that she would side and apparently become a violent supporter of Nightmare Moon? This is the pony who espoused she would always be loyal to the princess. However, if you want to get a fan fiction idea going, I'm throwing this out there. When Twilight mentions Princess Celestia and Rainbow Dash shares a nervous glance with another guard, I think there's two ways you can take that. One, Celestia is, for her name is forbidden. Nightmare Moon would be so bitter she'd want to expunge her, her sister from history. Or, and this is if you want to give a little silver lining of hope, what if Rainbow is putting on a tremendous act trying to find a way to liberate Celestia from the moon? Wow. Hmm. That is awesome. I'm, I didn't read that well, into the into the into the episode. I didn't read that much. Could be. Well, though. All it, I read was bad haircut. Well, yeah, she does have the military <laughs> buzz going. She has like, the military why? buzz going. Yeah. <clears throat> you but can't go is... from badass to military buzz cut. Go on. But this is the fun of these Alter Times. Let your your imagination go crazy. In a lot of ways, what we envision, what we think these Alter Times means, really say more about ourselves. But we're getting very close to having just that conversation about the, the fans and the continuity. But really, let's blitz these last visions, which are just very quick, quick, quick uh, shots of Discord ruling, Tyrek destroying, Flim and Flam industrializing. 
and then the nothing. And then death. So, okay, uh, we've sort of given everyone else a turn at first. I'm taking, I'm taking Wait, first place. could I say my piece on Nightmare Moon because... Um, oh, I'm sorry. Did I skip you? No. I'm yeah, you skipped dog. Oh, I, I, I'm so sorry. Uh, please, because please. Because of uh, reasons probably the listeners can't hear or not. It's just, it's really inconvenient for me to talk. But anywho, um, I'll make it quick. I do like the visuals on this scene. The blue tint is really good. Nightmare Moon having more words and walking and the new improved look looks good. Rarity with that bun is really good also. Uh, but the whole logic of this world is just confusing. Like, if you really think about it, this is another... Uh, Starlight like Glimmer, where the only reason why she's doing this is because nobody appreciates her night. That's about it. Yeah, another Starlight like Glimmer? What? You know, Starlight like Glimmer, cutie marks, this one, night. Oh, ba- basically it's... feeling underappreciated yes. le- leads to bitterness. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Anger leads to hate. Hate leads to suffering. Suffering leads to bad prequels. <laughs> and then lack of foresight leads to, well, sirens. Ooh, uh... Moving on! Next. Okay. So ha- have I, have I, has everyone had a turn? Yes. I'm so sorry. Yes. I yes. Really skipped yes. You there. No, no, okay. absolutely. It's your turn. All right. Well, the, the, the alter timeline blitz. The most fun, of course, was Discord. Mm-hmm. Seeing, you know, you think, oh, that doesn't look so bad, except for Luna and Celestia having to run laps. Mm-hmm. But then you realize that's every day. That happens every day. There's no chance to catch your breath. It's, Terrible, even though it looks fun. T-Rex wrecking stuff is season four finale. Again. This episode came out in the midst of the Siege of the Crystal Empire arc, where Flim and Flam were accomplices in treason, abduction, and uh, overthrowing all of Equestria. And, and to, to ask the same question as Doodle Dabble, why are we demonizing guy, these guys this much? They are I, con artists, but they're not co- despots. I am going to, uh, I, I'm gonna say this was a dart target decision. It's like, you know, when you have a target on the wall of your office and you're throwing darts at it, and then you're like, oh, I hit the Flim Flam brothers. Let's make them the last villain timeline of the, of the episode. Because it makes well, no sense. There is no other re- reasoning. I don't, I, I, I am with you. It makes no sense. What? Why are they the bad guys suddenly? They're super bad guys because this is supposed to be an escalation. So a lot of people are saying, oh, they're just tearing a Ponyville. Well, consider the escalation we've had. All of Equestria at war. Almost all of Equestria conquered by Changelings. All of Equestria conquered by Nightmare Moon. The next step would be all of Equestria demolished. And then all the worlds blank. I left out the ruinous future. You know... I am going to make a parallelism with the comics. I just saw some, I just saw a, a running theme going there. Do you remember how in the root of the problem, well to do gets devoured? Mm-hmm. Well to do, that's his name. <laughs> yeah. He's the only guy, the only villain besides King Sombra to be explicitly killed off in a black, in a black square. Okay. You don't say it, but he's, He's like you said in the review. He's fixing the plumbing as the ship is going down. He's more than he's more than dead. <laughs> so maybe industrialization and that kind of attitude of like destroying everything is a big no no for the writers of the show, and so they are doing their best to demonize them. Well, the way I look at it with the Flintstone Brothers is that okay, yes, they're con artists, but in the normal timeline. They're being controlled. They're being kept in check. Even in the Luna Micro, they got brought to court to be scolded and to be dealt with. So you keep them in check. But what happens if you don't? They con people out of everything and they grab and grab and grab and takes everything. And once they do, what's next? The world, of course. So Although Donald one- Trump? Well, one thing to take from all of these timelines, there is something that we didn't mention, is that if you look at them carefully, they all have one thing in common. Starlight Glimmer is never the winner. She is never the one in control of Ponyville. She is never the one spreading equality and everybody is equal and all that. No, she's, for all, for all we know, she could be dead. 
<laughs> For all we know, she could be completely gone. Do you think any of these high-tier villains are going to take any bullcrap from this one little villain in her village in the middle of nowhere where nobody gives a crap about her? Well, I don't I, think so. It, it's sort of, it's hanging out there. It's like, does she ever go back to the future herself to see? Because she seems to be stuck in that moment in the past. Well, yeah, because in the death world, like, she has stayed, like, she hasn't seen any of the futures, and she still thinks that Twilight is lying, even though she's seen, like, the death future herself. No, that's not what I'm trying to say. What I'm trying to say is that in any of those futures, and this is something that the MLP Facebook page kind of, like, hinted at, we never see Ponyville taken by the uh, equalitarians or the, the, the equality movement that Starlight had in her village. And that's something that in the, in the MLP Facebook, they released a screenshot saying everything is equal, everything is fine, you're going to find out in the season 5 finale. And that never happens. But when you take a look-see at how Starlight Glimmer is in terms of power level compared to the rest of the major villains, including the Flim Flams, she's nothing. She's absolutely nothing. Well, I don't know if she can go toe-to-toe with an alicorn, which let's talk about that in a sec too. So, Sapphire. What was your thoughts yes? of this of this alternate future Blitzkrieg bomb? Oh boy. Well, it definitely made great reference material to make a few quick gags. You were in one of them. Anyway, <laughs> I honestly have no direct opinion on every single timeline. Mostly because, well, it went by too quick. Like, okay, Jarek is destroying the world and... Discord is being, well, Discord, KP's favorite world, and Flim Flam Brothers, that is the most talked about for the reason I believe when Twilight says every world is worse than the last, and everybody seems to call Bullyak on the fact that the Flim Flam Brothers taking over Equestria in, like, an industrialized environment is apparently worse than war. Like, worse than the Sombra War. Honestly, it's never implied that Celestia died. Although, then again, I watched Josh Scorcher's, like, latest Cutie Me Remark um, episode where Ink Rose was basically counter-arguing everything we've stated about, like, the headcanons of what went on beforehand. I saw the same review last night. I also narrated for it, because I have a beautiful Dragon Ball Z voice. You have a beautiful Dragon Ball Z Fabio voice. I uh, must have it. This is tra- <laughs> this is Fabio in Dragon Ball. He needs a lozenge. <laughs> <laughs> could be worse. He could be narrating for a Michael Bay movie. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Although, who here has seen Vic Mignogna and the Nostalgia Critic? Just to lark Oh first. my god, Vic Mignogna. Who is he again? Friggin' Vic Mignogna. Okay, just to clarify, he played Edward Elric in Full Metal Alchemist. Uh, I hate that jerk. <laughs> I need to watch the video. I think he's, I thought he was also the narrator for Dragon Ball Z, the English dub. Maybe not, uh, maybe I'm getting my names mixed up, but there was a Nostalgia Critic with that narrator who just went overboard. Uh, <laughs> but, uh, Sapphire, do you, do you have more to add? Not on the spot, no. Probably to... later on after this podcast is over, but no, sorry. I, I want to add my retort to one thing that you brought up. The whole about, the, the whole thing about each universe is, uh, each alternate universe is worse than the one before. Mm-hmm. Uh, is that technically that's kind of true because in the first timeline that we see there is still a bit of a resistance there is some fight against it that is like they 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 are at war they are not necessarily winning but there is still a, a, a bit of conflict going there in the second one they are hiding they are not in the best position of course but at least there is they are not all dead in the third one with Nightmare Moon Celestia is gone. The land has been taken over by this one villain. It, so, it, like, it goes, it starts escalating. But when Twilight says each timeline is worse than the, than the, than the, than the previous one, and we end with the Flim Flam Brothers the, destroying, uh, on, like, scar, scar, scorching, uh, Ponyville. Okay, I uh, will agree with that 
as they no, 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 I, I, no, no, I'm, I'm not done. Let me let me finish because I think that okay. is kind of like I think she is uh, uh, being hyperbolic. It's like the, each timeline is worse than the other. It comes to my mind the trope: uh, arson, murder, carjacking, and jaywalking. <laughs> So, like, mm. you have three terrible things happen, and then one thing that is also a crime, but it's not so bad. So I think that in that case, the, the way that it's told, it and it has terrible timelines, but I think that the Flim Flam Brothers one was kind of, like, meant to be a joke. Eh, I'm not yeah, taking that point. seriously. Or it could be um, the worst timeline ever because it's a... Um environmentalist view oh, like right. an environmentalist would be like the horror well the shame. we established we established at the beginning that twilight is al gore so i think that will be a nightmare for her yes yeah pretty much <laughs> you guys know what this means right when when flim and flam appear again if they start trying to do another jingle twilight is going to shoot them on the spot yeah it's like no <laughs> i for the all this end but i like their corny music yeah. I, do, I, I do too, but they're dead. They don't know it yet, but they're dead. <laughs> we can help me find a place to hide the body. I know, just the place. Then again, that would also be a bit of a hypocrite towards Twilight, considering her carbon footprint, as stated at the beginning of this podcast. And That's then it. everything went silent. <laughs> <laughs> well, let uh, James, you've offered a rebuttal, but do you have further thoughts? Uh, regarding the other alternate timelines is that, um, God, it sucks that we couldn't have John Delancey for this one because I want to see more of the Discord timeline. That sounds like, I know it's terrible. It's like being forced to run in circles over and over again, but I wonder. That's so fun. Mm. <laughs> Damn. Come on, John Delancey. You, you, you put, put your fantastic like vocal cords to, put your fantastic vocal cords to work, to work. We need more Discord. But yeah, no, that's all I have. <laughs> Okay, also one dumb thing before we move on, sort of unrelated to the episode. Silver, I still have your lines, and I plan on using them for blackmail. Oh, dear. Oh, dear. <laughs> oh, my. Oh, As dear. I slow down and tone down the pitch of, collab with me. Collab with me. <laughs> but, but, Norman, okay, I, okay, I, I, don't, I don't want to skip you by mistake. So, what, what do you think of this collage of disaster? What, the whole thing or the last one where Starlight Glimmer sees the future? Uh, all, all of those rapid fire. Uh, any ones that stick out? Any thoughts that um, you wish to share? I don't know. I did mention my opinion on the Flim Flam Brothers and the whole Discord universe. Well, it's Discord. Technically, in my head canon right now, that could be the uh, reformed Discord just popping to another world just to torment the two sisters. Who knows? He has the power. <laughs> There's a scary thought. Oh, Celestia, I was so glad to listen to your hour-long lecture. <laughs> the other world you is going to get it so bad. <laughs> and for the future where Starlight Glimmer sees, I have nothing. Because there's nothing. Get it? There is nothing. There's... Uh, All right. Nice. But... It's like... <laughs> now, while Starlight, did you see a little peep in the background walking. <laughs> <laughs> Everything I... is dead. Celestia sacrificed herself and then the world died along with her. Although it'd be funny if Maud walked on screen. This is my version of heaven. <laughs> okay, and through all these timelines, as Twilight's been jumping back and forth, she's been trying to duke it out with Starlight Glimmer, who was going hoof for horn with an alicorn. Mm -hmm. And so many fans have called baloney on the fact that a unicorn can match an alicorn in, in magical combat. Maybe even surpass her, because... While Twilight took a little while to, to break free of that crystal prison, Starlight did it in half the time. This goes back to us talking about Celestia holding her power lest she turn Cantalot and the world into a crater. I'm honestly starting to question, are Alicorns really as powerful as we like to think they are? Well, from my point of view with this scenario in general, is that Twilight Sparkle is new to the whole Alicorn thing. She probably has a year in between to train up and stuff. But Starlight Glimmer here is much more powerful than Twilight is in terms of magic. Starlight Glimmer here wrote the time-traveling spell that Star Soul the Bearded couldn't finish. She is basically much better in terms of magic. Like, Twilight, her talent is magic. But Starlight Glimmer here is much more better than her. There's a phrase where there's someone much better than you out there. You just need to find them. 
is usually for fighting games and whatnot. And these terms apply here. Here's the thing, though. If if Starlight truly did finish a spell that, again, Star Scroll couldn't, and she's so magically gifted, you know what this means, right? What? She's yeah, in line to she be... She's in line to be the next new Alicorn princess. Oh, boy. Probably, but you see, when Celestia started the whole I'm going to take a student under my wings, we caught Sunset Shimmer, and she had the potential to become an Alicorn. Well, technically, she ended up becoming one. Maybe. We got no idea. In human form. Oh, in that is in, 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 uh, oh, Of course. Of course she's not canon. She's not canon at all. Yeah, true. It's all part of the alternate universe. It's not real. Yeah. <laughs> it's like, it's, it's, it's not, uh, really canon with the TV show, but consider it for a moment. When you have the character of, the, you can do a parallelism between Sunset Shimmer and Starlight Glimmer, because they all, they both start in, in a, in a very similar uh, position, and then they end up changing into something else. The thing is that Sunset Shimmer had a much better story arc, because she had two movies worth to become likable. The show is pretending us to feel for a character that was a complete and utter B-word. Think about it. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's like, no, it's like, she was a complete and utter that. I am not going to like her. I, I don't care if she had her heart torn apart because her boyfriend decided to go away because he had a cutie mark. No. <laughs> I am not going to feel sorry for you. You brainwashed a bunch of ponies. You created endless timelines in which, you, oh my god, the terrible things that have been happening on there. Lots of ponies dying. I don't care for you. I don't like you. Well, and Starlight Glimmer was originally created by Mattel, so what? yeah. She has the same voice as Barbie. <gasps> oh, yeah. What? Yeah. Wait, is, this, is this this Life in the Dreamhouse one? Yeah. <laughs> Oh well, god, my <laughs> my cousins, their little girl came out and watched. We watched like three episodes of that, and I was like, "Okay, this is self. This is self satirizing, but it's aimed at kids. I don't know how to feel about this." Especially since you watch a show with pastel candy colored horses with tattoos on their butts. <laughs> yeah, but the Barbie and... one had a, had a He Man figure. What? That's my child. That's my childhood. I need to watch this. I really need to watch this. Really now? Did he have a human figure? Well, you see, uh, I don't mean to lark off into the thing, but this cartoon, apparently, they are actual Barbie dolls. They are living in one of those fold-out play sets. Uh, and so there is a 1980s He-Man figure who paradoxically is not alive or animated, but Barbie's coming on to him anyway. You know what? I think I've seen Tumblr images of this where... Why does the fire not work or something like that? Oh yeah, I'm trying to to make fire with two sticks. Why do I even bother? They're made of plastic. <laughs> <laughs> we are not talking about Starlight Glimmer or the MLC okay. episode anymore. We're talking about Barbie now. <laughs> <laughs> well sorry. done, Sapphire. You hijacked the show. <laughs> no, no, no. That's fine. It's the right. It's the right of passing for everybody. Everyone here has has derail, hijacked, and then rail the show again. It's fine. You're one of us now. One of us. One of us. Can I come on more often then? I am. Oh, please. <laughs> no, you know what? This is a sausage fest already. We need more girls in this show. Yes, you totally can come as as often as you want. Yeah. <laughs> I'll be on all season six. Oh. Oh my. Oh my. Awesome. You know, this is how we got you, Silver. Yes, indeed. <laughs> yeah. Watch out. Yeah, watch exactly. Out. This, this is I how they get their claws. Female Silver Cole then. <laughs> yeah, watch out. This is how they get their claws in you. <laughs> it, it is true because we brought you in with the season four finale and now you, like, there is no way we can get rid of you. I mean, there is no way we want you to live. <laughs> Back to the ponies. Let's chat a little bit about fandom interpretation, shall we? Because. Mm. I've been holding off. Uh, Norman was kind enough to hold his thoughts until uh, until this time with time travel and assumptions. So here's my two cents just to start things off. So when I talk about uh, ego or how no one can, can finish thing, no one in Equestria can handle anything without Twilight, a lot of people responded, well, Silver, obviously, if if they're fighting King Sombra, then they must have defeated... Nightmare Moon and Queen Chrysalis. 
or uh, well, clearly, I enjoy Ink Rose's headcan. She obviously puts a lot of thought and creativity into him, but she's still following the continuity rails, assuming that because we're at this point in the show's timeline, these other events must have happened. Who's to say the stars that free Nightmare Moon said, hey, how about we not unleash a ruthless t- terrorist alicorn on the kingdom? Let's go, let's go watch the IT crowd instead. <laughs> what if, what if Chrysalis said, no, let's not go to Cantalot. It is a silly place. We've taken out one aspect of the world's history, the, the main six getting their marks at the same time. Why do we assume everything else has just played out the same way? Mm. Is I, I don't know. Perhaps because it all comes from the same event. Would you argue that maybe when Nightmare Moon came back, if, if like imagine even if the stars did bring her back, because that's what the legend says, and that's what ends up happening. If the main oh. six hadn't been there, do you think that in the end she would have been thrown off of her throne? Like the guards would have been after her, and they would have defeated her. Well, that well, there's the one thing you said that it was foretold. Therefore, it must have happened. Remember, if if you've taken away one element of destiny or fate, why do all the other elements have to fall back into place? Basically, you have broken the fixed order. That's why I don't want to just take it for granted that everything else has occurred. Now, maybe you do want to say, maybe that just makes more sense. Somehow, the ponies made it through these first two trials, but they're really struggling to finish this third. Fair enough. But I get this impression people are do, are taking this as the given, no questions asked. And I say, ask questions. Go crazy. Let your imagination just go wild with possibilities. Don't let <laughs> continuity be your cage. Yeah, it's, what you're saying is that history is made out of more than just one event. I hate to do this parallelism because it's the parallelism that everybody else does. But I, I don't care. Like, if something had changed during World War II, maybe Hitler would have been defeated after all, but it would have maybe taken longer to defeat him. Actually, you should read Harry Turtledove. Harry Turtledove. He is an author who does great speculative fiction about alternate history. Ooh. Hmm. And there is, let's see here, I'm trying to remember the, uh, I'm trying to remember the title of a short story, Must and Shall. In Must and Shall, Abe Lincoln was killed at Fort Sumter. And you, now, if we went by this episode's line of thought, well then, oh, the South would have won the Civil War. No, no. The, the North still won, but they were much more angry and imposed harsher penalties upon the South. Fast forward to World War II, the rest of the world has played out uh, much the same in terms of history, which people criticize the story. But Hitler and the Third Reich are trying to fund a neo-Confederate revolution to weaken America. And this is not just, you know, some guys who got a little too liquored up and need to get with the times. This is legitimate cultural fury. So that's what I mean letting sometimes working with history can make for interesting stories sometimes break the chain can work really well too through that because the new game um wolfenstein uh, new blood and new order that kind of mess around with the whole hitler kind of story and it's pretty interesting <laughs> mecha hitler <laughs> Sorry, I I always like Wolfenstein for that concept. We kind of like gone a bit off topic. When are we talking about Starlight Glimmer? (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) Right. We were talking about Starlight, but we're also talking about how fans have viewed all these alternate histories. How how to describe this? I don't want to make it sound like I'm calling people out, but I guess I will. Uh, There's the argument that, oh, Equestria is much more secure and stable under a tyrant. I would rather live under a tyrant and have peace. And I just think, well, that that's probably saying more about the speaker than it is what's in the actual show. Because just because Nightmare Moon doesn't have a revolution on her doorstep does not mean all is calm and peace under benevolent dictatorship. True that. And in the same view, you're saying that in terms of, okay, I've gotten this, I'm tired of this, I want something new. And that something new is, well, Nightmare Moon, Tyrannosy. But if you're in the same boot, 
you're going to say, I want liberty. So it's a term of greener on the other side. Norman, I asked you to hold off on your thoughts about time travel, but this seems like a, an opportune time to go into it. Okay. I mentioned before, certain points in time, they're kind of fixed. The return of Nightmare Moon, the return of Sombra, these are the two timelines that are fixed. For Discord and Terek, they're maybes. Let's go for Nightmare Moon. After a thousand years of imprisonment in the in the moon or on the moon? In the moon, right? In the Sorry. moon. Oh, yes. I, I get livid about that. Okay. In the moon, she's free and comes back to, of all places, the castle of the two sisters and starts, well, conquering everything. So, okay, we got that alternate future there. But we started off with Sombra, which is after a thousand years, the Crystal Empire came back. So you're telling me that Sombra takes precedency over Nightmare Moon. I know they're trying to tell a story of different timelines working and whatnot, but what happened? Well, that's where I say just let your imagination go wild. I, I've put forth the idea that maybe the, the stars that were supposed to free Nightmare Moon, since one part of the world is already gone, Twilight and her friends, in a sense, uh, maybe the stars said, you know what, this seems like a bad idea. We've changed our minds. We didn't touch upon the petty of the motivations that Starly Glimmer has for being the way she is and <laughs> acting the way she's acting, right? Because, ooh, ooh. I can feel the seething rage coming from Sapphire, and it's so much fun. Well, oh, it makes me so happy. I don't understand why the fandom right has turned Starlight Glimmer into what Sathisto on Equestria Daily likes to call a darling, because she's not a darling. She's a recluse spider. <laughs> she is, she's a demon. She's a sociopath. I don't trust her one bit. Just because you're voiced by Barbie doesn't mean you're not a yandere. No, in fact, I will say because you're voiced by Barbie, you are a yandere. <laughs> so you have to be careful. So she's out to kill everybody? Just get well, some pie and knows her? I thought that was my you, job. Have you seen <laughs> Have you seen Barbie in Toy Story 3? She is an action woman. You have to be careful with her. She's mm. going to rip your head off. <laughs> As for the character Starlight Glimmer here, she's poorly motivated. Her motivations are shallow at best. All of Starlight's motivations brings rage to my INTJ personality. That's all. That's all I have to say. Okay, but then uh, let allow me to play a devil's advocate. Uh -huh. How is Starlight different from Moondancer, who also became a fandom darling? Because, well, for starters, because she didn't, didn't try to brainwash to... anyone. After that. Yes, she didn't try to overthrow an entire town and spread that equality bullcrap all over Equestria. That's that's the. Then first. again, I think Silver had mentioned this before in his Silver Quilted review of it. In a way, it's not different, but I might be going into a philosophical um, discussion over this. How is Twilight and Friends trying to stop and rainbowfy everybody and conforming them into the ways of harmonious friendship any difference from Starlight Glimmer's equality aspect? I mean, well, sure, there's the argument of good versus evil, but I don't know. What are your guys' thoughts? Well, everyone tries to claim they're good in conflict. Starlight thinks she's doing something for the good of Equestria. I think the key difference, for me at least, is that Twilight and Friends are simply trying to help show people they're living the example. Starlight had to lie and brainwash everyone into her line of thinking. And to be honest, when, when you have to argue that hard, the problem is you're arguing against yourself. I like this term where nobody thinks themselves as a villain. Nobody says that, Aha, I'm evil. Everyone is the hero oh, of their own story. has Papyrus showed up in the podcast? <laughs> Maybe. Aww. But no, but here's the thing. Nobody claims themselves to be evil. Like, Dr. Evil, in his name, evil as he may be, just wants to conquer the world and make it a better place in his own vision. But as for other villains, they never claim to be the bad guy. They just want to do what's right in their eyes. And unfortunately, it goes against our main heroes. 
I think um, I saw a Facebook meme at one point where there was a, like, meme or whatever that discussed, like, um, the villain's actual motivations and tried to make it more empathetic for the audience. This one I remember very, very well. Chrysalis's motivation was to feed her children. Well, that's the one I remember, but it would give, like, all the villains, like, their motivations, like, um... I think it went up to season three? I don't know, maybe season four? I don't know, it's been forever since I've seen it. But I can see where you're coming from through one's own interpretation of goods versus evil. Moving on. And to, uh, I think I'll put this last note on uh, Starlight. What she's thinking and what she's doing, she thinks that she's in the right. And her only way of doing things is the Triforce of Evil, which is like she and Steel. That's the only way she can do things. And honestly speaking, why is she not in Cantalot School for the Gifted? Like, that's a good place for her. She well, probably she probably wasn't born, born to the entitled... Uh, I I don't need to dump on Twilight because I do enjoy her character, but she was born with a lot of advantages, not just being magically gifted, but apparently in a very prominent family. She's loaded. Twilight... Twilight is part of the 1%. Okay, uh, let me just bring this up. Sunburst, Sunset's friend who saved her from falling books, he's going to the school for gifted unicorns. Why not her? I think I remember like her saying like she refused to move out of her hometown and she also had refused to like make any new friends. Of course, that doesn't match up with like Canterlot and whatnot. But we also learn later on in the episode that she's a self-taught unicorn. Like, maybe she had to work harder in order to... Learn stuff. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay, I mean, that makes sense there. But still, if other ponies see her potential, they want her to be there. Well, she distanced herself. But anyway, uh, enough with her. Silva, what's next on the agenda? Uh no, 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 no. Not enough. Not, Not enough with her because I think I found the fallacy in the... In, in in this episode, mm-hmm. I think I found the fallacy in it. Yeah, I think I found. It. I think I, fi- I figured it out. I know why uh, why her motivation is like this. Why her, she's written like that. Okay, but essentially this show is for little kids. Mm-hmm. Essentially, everybody can enjoy it. No problem. Her motivations for doing what she's doing are downright childish. There is no way a grown up is going to behave like a child. I mean, okay, there's people who react on knee jerks. They, they have knee jerk reactions. They, they have a hissy fit and then a few weeks later they come back and they are like, oh, I'm such an idiot. I, I am a moron. There is no way someone is going to follow through with a plan like, oh, because a cutie mark brought sourness to my life, I am going to prevent everybody to have, from having cutie marks. That is like saying, that, that is like saying, yeah, exactly. That is like saying, I'm going to create a village where nobody's going to have an iPhone. Because when my family bought an iPhone, that brought a rift between my sister and myself. So because of that, I am going to create a town where nobody has iPhones, except I have an iPhone totally, which is how I keep everybody under control that I, that they don't have iPhones. So it's I like, actually don't it's, have an iPhone. <laughs> I don't have an iPhone either. I am an Android guy. So exactly <laughs> the same. No, I don't like Apple. But thing is that, because of the way that she's written, her motivations are childish because this show is written with children in mind. The lesson, this lesson can work for little kids. For grown-ups, it, not only does it fly above our heads, but it, it brings us to the conclusion that this character is not very well written. Because what you said at the beginning of the review, Silver, is that, uh, someone's trauma in life doesn't come from just one event. It's a combination of many. True that. I, and I can see that if um, James yeah. explained it really well. And Silver, we need to make a plan to get rid of the androids. The androids. Oh, well, the, the android iPhone war shall continue ad nauseum. Yeah, I don't well, have it's an the android console, either. <laughs> it's the new console wars, you see. Before it was Super Nintendo or Sega Genesis. Now it's Apple or Samsung. <laughs> so... Yeah. So give us a call. Uh, Sapphire. Sapphire, what what do you have then? 
Well, I have an LG. I don't prioritize. My family doesn't prioritize itself in technology. My mom says, like, if I want an iPhone, I gotta get a job and get myself. And you know how much those things cost. Yeah. They're like friggin' six hundred dollars. I don't have a job. I live off of commissions. Um, the Sorry. LG is is running on an Android OS. It's a Verizon phone. I don't know what it is. It's <laughs> uh, it's a poor man's phone. Uh, what? <laughs> Are we done with uh, Starlight yeah. and her CCP? Yeah, yeah. Now, now, now I, we're done. Now we're I'm think, done at least. I think we can wrap up the, the episode because am I right that we're all in agreement that the, the friendship song at the end is once again a very hasty forgiveness? Yes. Yeah. The, this I, show loves to... This, just... this, this franchise loves to redeem their villains. Mm -hmm. We saw it on that Kelpie comic mm -hmm. where they literally redeemed the villain in the last two pages. We saw it with uh with uh a Starlight on this episode. We have well they kind of like redeemed Diamond Tiara as well, although she like that. oh my god, here it is. Diamond Tiara's redemption and her character overall is way more likable and way more believable because one, she's a little girl, she's a little filly, she's still young, and two, she has had so many moments where she enjoys being the villain. I don't remember a Starlight Glimmer enjoying being the villain. It feels like everything she's doing is very forced. Indeed. With Diamond Tiara, she, it's, it's unfair to say that she's a better character in terms of villains. Well, she has five years of development to get that redemption with yeah. uh, Starlight here she has only what the first two episodes and the last two so in total four not including her yeah. background appearances yeah and not only that but it's like I it's it's awesome the idea of like they defeated King Sombra they scored Queen Chrysalis and all that and the one ongoing bad guy Un, 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 unredeemed, unrepentant throughout the entire series up until half with season five was this little filly. This, this little filly that could be like the Doctor Evil of the entire TV show. She's the one, the one villain that never got redeemed. And Angel. Angel. Yeah. Uh, and, well, Angel. Angel. Yeah, Angel. Angel is now, Angel is now the, 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 the he's the Angel of Darkness. <laughs> oh well. The Angel of Death. But, but here's the thing also, like, we have the meeting of the main six where they're discussing, should we really do this? Like, she tried to take over the world. Should we just let her yeah. go? Like, they're Yeah, but they're like, musical number, musical number, musical number. Yay. Musical number, save the world. We learned that from yeah. season three. Yeah. I hate also, the music. Also, yeah. Twilight, Twilight makes to make, tries to make the assertion that Equestria is weakened with, when friendships are, are diminished. And that's, I'm sure a lot of people will point that against the idea that the writer ego is present. However, this self-same episode, we saw a friendship ended with Sunburst and, and Starlight. And Equestria didn't end. Nothing was destroyed. One Philly went a little cuckoo for Cocoa Puffs. Mm -hmm. But hey, <laughs> Twilight and her friends redeemed her. Because they are the more awesome friendship. Mm -hmm. True. But this brings up the whole fact where why are their friendship more important than others? But I think we kind of found that, that out ourselves throughout the whole episode. Plus, we'll have... Uh, there'll be ample opportunity to ask that in other events. Mm -hmm. where We've been going at this for quite a while. Oh, yes. Yeah, like two hours. Mm -hmm. We so, have, okay, and we, we, have hours, we have but... we have some we have some left as well because we are going to discuss something after the episode is done. Mm -hmm. But <laughs> yeah, <laughs> but good. I think we need to uh, we need to proceed into final uh, thoughts. Yes. Yeah, yeah, good idea. Let's go to final thoughts already. Let's so, Sa Sapphire, hit us with your final yes. thought. Okay, just so that everything gets wrapped up quickly, it was okay. It was complete bullyack. <laughs> Oh, wow. It made me shake my head throughout the whole thing, and the only thing I liked that appealed to my standards was the Rainbow Dash in the somber universe, because she was a total badass. Norman, I guess? Yes, Norman. So, for me, I like this episode because of how the time-traveling works. 
But the other side of me says, uh, this doesn't work, that doesn't work. There's a lot of things in here that is so confusing, it makes no sense, especially the Nightmare Moon and Sombra thing. Like, that goes, that just, it makes my head hurt. But, like I mentioned before, you guys should really read the fanfic, the, rea- the reality I choose by the Hatman. That brings a kind of new spin on things, where why does it have to be all doom and gloom? Why couldn't it be awesome? Much better, in fact. Because the Ferliot parents did it first. <laughs> <laughs> well, nothing comes free. Like, even if um this were to happen, there would always be a cost. Mm, true that, true that. Yes. But it's just a notion there. But overall, my opinion on said episode is good episode. Nice, not bad. I kind of like it. But for a season finale, it's weak. James, what about your your own views? Um, as an artist, I adore this episode because it looks so cool and it gives so many ideas. Love the way that it's that it's uh, put together, visual style. It's very distinctive. It's perhaps one of the one of the most uh, one of the uh, finales that has the most amount of personality. Um, but narratively speaking, it's a complete and utter mess. It has it opens way too many doors, answers basically not one of the questions, not a single one of the questions. It has, uh, and like you said, it has an inflated ego about the main characters. That it's funny because it's something that is not present in any of the other episodes of this show. In fact, it's something that every other episode of this show does its best to like uh, put down. Um, I'm not going to blame Josh Haber for this entirely, uh, but it's kind of like something usual uh, with him. Like, he has really good episodes, like Castlemania, like uh, 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 Simple Ways. I think it's excellent. But then he has weak episodes, like, you know, the uh, the Leap of Faith one that, that was rather weak. And I am willing to put this one on, these ones on the same level as that one. I kind of approve that they don't continue on with making Starlight Glimmer a bad guy but instead of getting redeemed she should have been a bit, at least defeated like mm-hmm. there is there is no way she wasn't just walking to the walking to a cell in the deepest dungeons of of Canterlot there is there, there is no way in any normal universe she should have been arrested at least uh or you know breaking stones in the sidewalk on the side of the road, <laughs> but uh, yeah, when it comes to season finales, I wouldn't count this among the the, the strongest. I, I don't think it's the weakest, but yeah, it's, it's it's slightly above the weakest. Uh, yeah, there you go. What about you, Silver? What what do you think of it? When I watch the season finale, I ask myself if the show were to end here, if this were my last fresh. Episode of My Little Pony, Friendship is Magic, because I'm sure a G5 will hit the hit the shelves someday. Uh, I I ask, would I be okay? This one I would be, because it is a look back at all they faced, what could have been had they failed. That's still the the, the lens that I I view this through. Uh, and so I I don't think it would be a bad ending. It's definitely not. The high point for me, but truth be told, I've yet to have a season finale where I say, yeah, that's wrapped up in a nice bundle, the perfect message. There's, there's always more that could be done. Uh, I will say two final thoughts on questions that have been raised. Why is every future worse? I've often wondered, the map is so powerful that it can resist the change of time. Could it be directing Twilight towards the bad futures? To educate and motivate her. Hmm. Is, hmm. is is there a puppeteer in this episode that we aren't readily seeing? And two, we never see uh, alternate world twilights. And in all honesty, I don't think we need to because we saw that already. Moon Dancer is what Twilight could have become. And that was a very powerful example. And this was meant... <laughs> to lead into Equestria Girls 3, where we saw yet another alternate type Twilight. So we, we've seen those, it's just not in that this episode. Although, 
Another dumb thing I just like to point out, since you said Equestria Girls, why are we spoiling, like, why did we have to warn people of spoilers when Equestria Girls spoiled the friggin' season finale for us? Technically, it <laughs> technically it didn't, but yeah, okay, fair enough. Well, here's, the, here's the reason, here's the only reason why. <laughs> because know. of the long hiatus in between seasons. Just because of that. The Equestria Girls uh, Friendship Games kind of accidentally spoiled the ending because of, well, if they kept on track, season ends and then movie. Yeah, I was just, okay. That's true. I mean, I know it's just a joke and whatnot, but some other people might question it. Moving on. like Moving on. Well, we're moving on to who knows what comes next. Uh, oh, yeah, so. because we don't have any other episodes left. This is the end of the season. Oh, yes. Yeah, and we're not going yeah. to get anything until April. Yeah. yeah. And, and so, McCoy, yeah. you better get your butt in gear. <laughs> actually, actually Wait, they haven't said <laughs> April yet. They just said spring. They said Which, spring. Yeah. Spring goes on the way back to June. So, yeah, good <laughs> point. when it's going to happen. Uh, I got no idea about the seasons because I live in a continent where there on, there's only two seasons. Well, and those seasons would be? Wet and dry. <laughs> <laughs> but you do get Chinese New Year. Uh, that You guys have it too. It's just a lunar calendar kind of thing. I was in Chinese class back in 8th grade, so technically I should be celebrating this too. Yeah, you, you can Somebody get me the dumplings! <laughs> okay. Oh my god. Yeah, you're all making me hungry. So next time, we've talked at length about the season finale, but we haven't gotten to share our thoughts about Le Season. That's French for the season. Uh-huh. <laughs> so, join us next time as we share our favorite episodes, our least favorite episodes, and where we think this season stacks up in comparison to others. So, and we want to extend a special thank you to Sapphire Heart Song for joining us for this Descent into Madness. No, no problem. I love you guys. Oh, Since I notice me. <laughs> <laughs> okay. I think we're past the point of notice and at the restraining order phase. <laughs> <laughs> All right. I wasn't talking to you. I was talking to James. <laughs> and, I'm, uh-huh. and, I'm what did I do now? <laughs> and I'm encouraging James. Get the restraining order, man. Get it. 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 I, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Okay. I don't know. Help. <laughs> Well, but for the MBS show, I am the man to the hippogriff, Silver Quill. I am the man Sanzo. Things seem to be right in time. I have been James Cork and I need some chocolate milk because according to a Men in Black 3, we are not on the same timeline. Just don't get it from me. You'll get sugar free. And I'm Sapphire Heartsong. Dare to be different. So we're saying so- adios. See you. Have a good one, guys. I miss that music so much. <laughs> <laughs> uh, you'll get used to it. <laughs>